I'm Joan Howes. And when my husband and I moved to Austin about 30 years ago, we tried to find a church similar to the one we had left behind. It was Jack Bowen's Unity Church of Today in Warren, Michigan. Unfortunately, after trying so many possibilities, we could not find a spiritual home that really fed our souls. So we did a lot of masterminding, first Fred and I, and then with other friends, so that we could find a place that felt like a spiritual home. About that time, one of those wonderful God-manufactured coincidences, Ron and Lenora Scott were graduating and being ordained as Unity Ministers. Now, we had known Ron and Lenore at our home church, the Church of Today, and knew that they were wonderful people who had the same mindset spiritually that we had left. So we invited them to come down to Austin to have a look at us and see if they would possibly consider pioneering a church here. When they first visited, we got together a group of like-minded people who were also searching for a church home. There were about 45 of us at that first meeting, and it was wonderful because they seemed so in tune with what we were asking and responding to their questions. It, it was just a perfect match, truly a match made in heaven. And so from that point on, they did what they needed to do to clear their, their schedules and come on down here and become our first pastors. And they were the perfect choice because they established the standards of love and acceptance here and also the quest for excellence in every single part of what they did. Every part of this church runs on spiritual excellence. It's kind of funny because Fred and I thought we were coming down here to retire, but as it turned out, God had other plans. And so it was really a thrill to be part of the beginning of this wonderful church. Hello, I'm Jim Skaggs. In mid-1995, the steering committee for this church, later to become Unity Church of the Hills, met for the first time in our living room. There were nine people in the steering committee, including senior ministers Ron and Lenore Scott, which guided the church in 1995 and 1996 until the first board of trustees was elected. Including the senior ministers, six of the nine people had significant business backgrounds, which I think was vitally important to the church's success. All nine had a very close correlation in their vision of a dream church, one with unity's principles. They all supported and most had experienced the reality that if you believe it, you can make it happen. This became a foundation principle of Unity Church of the Hills, as evidenced by the early first board commitment to move into our own church by the end of our five-year lease of a prior church's space in a strip mall up the street. Many told us that this was impossible go. But with commitment and faith, we moved into the beautiful church five and one half years later. We have been one of the fastest growing unity churches in the world. My objective is still to provide the assistance I can to assure Unity Church of the Hills continues to be a leading U.S. unity church and expands in serving members to transform their lives. Dear friends, and fellow travelers on this spiritual journey, we want to share some of our perspective on the way Spirit supported and directed the first dozen years of Unity Church of the Hills. It was obvious from the outset that God was in charge of the formation and development of the church, and we were allowed the privilege of being along for the ride. Once we grasped this, our primary function was to find creative ways to say yes to the divine ideas that were continually unfolding around us. Putting God first 
<clears throat> those were the words that were spoken endlessly with every new idea, with every need of the church as it grew and expanded from school cafeteria to a storefront church to a beautiful facility on 10 acres. Well, the storefront would meet our growing needs at that time. There were no chairs available. We placed our, our need on a prayer list, trusting that God would come through for us. And almost immediately a phone call came from a woman in the congregation. She'd been at a meeting across town in a church and she overheard a conversation of the minister and another person. The minister there was being donated chairs and pews from a larger church. He wanted to keep them because he thought maybe in five years they'd be large enough to use them, but for right now he didn't have a place to store them. Well, you can imagine he was happy to give them to us, especially when he heard we had a five-year lease on our property. With God, anything seemed possible in those days, and that was always the, the backdrop of every thought that we had, and it continues to be in the church to this day. Another situation was a few years later when it became apparent that the church would be outgrowing that facility and would require more space. The two of us were hoping to acquire an older church nearby because we'd witnessed the difficulty our minister back in Michigan had experienced in building <clears throat> a new facility. But the clear desire of you, the congregation, was to find our own property and to build our own place. The guidance led us all to the most perfect space in Northwest Austin, where a man sold us property he had loved dearly. We know that God experiences and the direction of God will continue for UCOH, for your wonderful new ministers, for the entire church leadership, and for each of you and your loved ones. Our love and blessings are with you.